Hi, I'm Mike Lewis, and this week our text is talking about small groups. But I'd like to begin by talking about great groups, groups that produce amazing accomplishments. There's a book out called Organizing Genius by Warren Bennis. He talked about the book, saying he was interested in extraordinary collaborations, the process whereby great groups are able to accomplish so much more than talented people working alone. The most exciting groups, the ones that shook the world, resulted from a mutually respectful marriage between an able leader and an assemblage of extraordinary people. Groups become great only when everyone in them, leaders and members alike, is free to do his or her absolute best. I read the book in one of my courses for the Master's in Education degree and have never forgotten it. Some of the groups he writes about include the early Disney studio. Animation was brand new back then and the artists creating the animations couldn't wait to get up each day and get back to their drawings. Another group he writes about in the book was called the Manhattan Project. The American scientists whose job was to build an atomic bomb in World War II before the Germans did it. They made a movie about that project called Fat Man and Little Boy and starring Paul Newman, and it's a darn good movie. The first Clinton campaign was another great group. No one thought the man from Hope had any hope of winning the presidency. And the last group I'll mention is one that you all probably know a little better, Apple Computers. Whether you're a Mac or a PC, you can certainly see the astonishing success that Apple continues to enjoy. One thing I remember reading is part of the company's motto, We Deliver. Obviously, that's the bottom line, right? Delivering a product. Most of us never get lucky enough to belong to groups this great, but even pretty good groups would be fine, certainly better than mediocre or bad groups. So what makes a group great? Well, you should read the book. But some of the highlights I remember are things like most of the members are young, partly because they haven't experienced failure enough to know their limits. Their minds are open to all possibilities. These are gifted young people with strong leaders, and they're totally focused on their work. Families are ignored, lawns turn brown, goldfish die. But the work the group produces is incredible. The project brings them together, bringing out their collective best, there are no morale problems in great groups, and when the thing is finished, the group often spins apart. But even great groups have problems. Obviously, building a nuclear bomb presents moral problems, and you won't find many stories in the book of women or minorities. But society has come a long way since these groups were created. If you redid the book now, wouldn't Oprah's company be part of it? Certainly, there are lessons here for all of our groups, from our families to our classrooms and our communities. And certainly, communication plays a key role in making a group either great or terrible. To learn more about that, read Chapter 9 and think about the groups you're in. Are they great? We'll talk about that later this week on our discussion board. Thanks for watching.